Yeah. Good evening, children. Good evening, Good evening. online students. Rajit, then Good evening, ma'am. Yeah, hi. Good evening, Florentina and uh, Madhumita. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, please help me too. Now, uh, Friday's class, those of you who attended Friday's class must have. OK, only you attended Friday's class. Uh, you couldn't. You all couldn't, right? You also didn't. OK, so I'm now going to explain what you have worked on now Friday. All right, so it's not new. Today's session is not new. So in today's session, I'll be explaining what children who attended Friday's class have already worked in their book. So you have to listen and complete it at home. I'll be explaining now the material is already on WhatsApp with you. So those uh, those uh, questions and answers which I've shared on WhatsApp, I'm explaining now. Children who attended Friday's class have worked it in their book. I don't know if they completed everything, but they've worked in their book, at least a part of it. You have to complete whatever is shared on WhatsApp with you. You'll have to complete it by the next class on Thursday. And in today's class, I'll only be explaining because it's numerical. It's completely numerical. So once you understand why this formula, when, which formula, you will be able to help yourself. We'll see every aspect of the answer. Only just that we will not work in today's class. And the material is already with you, so I don't have to share anything with you. <clears throat> so I think uh, so the class on Saturday, what is the last one we did? Fifth one. Huh? This one. OK, I think the second one was no, this was homework. Yeah, this was homework. Yes. All right. So it took this time for me to figure out. From where I have to continue. Fine. <clears throat> so children, uh, online students. And of course you are here. So this was where we stopped in the class on Saturday. Last Saturday. Thursday. Yeah, this was where we stopped in the class. Uh, last Thursday, not this week, Thursday, the uh, Thursday last week, Thursday. And these two sums were given as homework, so we're going to see the answers now. All right. The question is find the number of terms in each of the following. So that is in this arithmetic progressions, how many terms you have to add from the beginning so that the total is 3969. So that the total is 3969. The question is in this arithmetic progression, how many terms you'll have to add from the beginning? First 10 terms, first 20 terms, first 30 terms. How many terms should you add so that the sum is 3969? So we know the first term, we know the common difference. OK, so you know. You know the value of A, you know the value of D. Not A is equal to D, sorry. You know A, you know D and you know SN. OK, so SN is equal to 3969. This is what you should write first. SN is equal to 3969. So this is an equation actually. SN is equal to 3969 is an equation. SN is equal to 3969 is an equation. The sum of the first how many terms we don't know. That's why SN. If it was a sum to first 20 terms, we will write S20 is equal to 3969. If it is a sum of the first 30 terms, we will write S30 is equal to 3969. Now we do not know the uh, that we do not know the sum of how many terms is 3969. So SN is equal to 3969. Then after this, the formula N by 2. And we don't know. See the three unknowns in arithmetic progression. The three unknowns are A and N D. Meaning unknowns meaning what we have to substitute in the formula. The three unknowns are A, N and D. All right. So <clears throat> now N by so in this formula N by 2, N by 2 of 2a plus n minus 1 into d is equal to 3969. There should be at least one unknown. If you know if you know the values of a, n, and d, then what are you working for here? See, there are three unknowns. You can see a here, n here, and d here. Okay, so we have the value of a and d. We don't know n. If you know n, then what is the purpose? What are we trying to work? We know everything. Yeah, so the unknown here is n. 
the unknown is n. So you'll have to substitute. So n is n. N by two of two a two into minus one, two into minus one plus n minus one. We don't know the value of n into d one by four one by four minus minus one. D is the second term minus the first term. The second term is one by four. The first term is minus one. The difference between the second and the first term. So it is one by four plus one, which is five by four, which is five by four. To so substitute that five by four is equal to three nine six nine. Is equal to three nine six nine. So remember, this is uh, n minus one into d. So you'll have to multiply n into five by four is five by four n, and minus one into five by four is minus five by four. We will have to multiply. Don't take five by four to the other side uh, as into four by five or something. See, this is n minus one into d. N minus one into d. So you need to multiply this. You need to multiply this. N into five by four minus one into five by four. And here two into minus one is minus two. So n by two of minus two. Uh, plus 5n by 4 minus 5 by 4 is equal to 3969. Now you can simplify these two. Okay. All right. So now we have opened up the bracket. So now no more mistakes you can make. So like this, when we proceed work, you simplifying this, you will get a quadratic equation in n. So what's the equation you've got? If you have completed the homework, what's the equation you've got? Uh, Krishmi, this is last week's work. So you should have completed. Yeah, what's the equation and then look into your book and tell me the answer. You didn't do the homework? Online students, what is the equation and n? The quadratic equation in n? 5n square minus 13n minus 31752. 5n square minus? 13n. Ah. Minus 31752. Is equal to zero. All right, let me check if I have the same thing. Thank you, Prajit. You're acknowledging my answer, so I'm right. So 5n squared. So see, here I've opened up. See, I told you all this minus 2, 5n by 4, minus 5 by 4 is equal to 3969. All right, then we take up the common. We have to simplify this bracket, right? So I've taken the common denominator. Can you see here? Common denominator 4, and then you know how to get the numerators. All right. So after the common denominator, uh, we have minus 8, minus 5, so minus 13. Minus 8, minus 5, which is minus 13. Correct? So 5n minus 13 by 4. n by 2 into 5n minus 13 by 4 is equal to 3969. So now I'm multiplying the numerators. Multiplying the numerators, multiplying the denominators. So n into 5n minus 13 by 2 fours are 8. Two for the multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators. This into this is what you see here. Two into four, eight is equal to three, nine, six, nine. Cross multiply, cross multiply, you get this. And now here n into five n, five n square, n into minus 13 is minus 13 n. So finally, we got this quadratic equation in n. Now, you know, the number is too large to find to split the middle term. To solve this by splitting the middle term, the numbers are really large. It's difficult to find the two numbers. So you can use a quadratic formula. OK, so we have done. You've learned this in school, right? Yeah. So we all know the quadratic formula. <clears throat> so a, the value of a is 5, b is minus 13, and c is minus 31752. OK, so first find the discriminant. d is equal to b square minus 4ac. When you work that, this is what I get. And this one should be a perfect square. How do you find the square root? How do you find the square root? Prajit, did you use a calculator for the square root or you work this? No. Did you find the square root of 635209? Yes, ma'am. Okay, fine. So group it from behind like this, correct? Then? Uh, 8 8 is 64. So 7 7 is 49. What's the remainder? 13 minus 9, 4. 5 minus 4, 1. And the next pair comes down. 5 2 comes down. Then, correct? 
then whatever digit you're going to place here, place the same digit here. All right. So now we will have to try. But since I know the number already nine, I'm trying nine. Okay. So 149 into nine. So I'm going to place nine here and nine here. 149 into nine. Nine nines are 81, one eight carried over. Nine fours are 36 plus eight, 44, four four carried over. Nine ones are nine plus four, 13. Okay, so one, three, four, one. Remainder one, one, one. The next pair comes down. The next pair comes down. So add nine, <clears throat> one fifty eight. Whatever you place here, place the same digit here. Now, since this is the last stage of the division process, you know that this number, this one digit here is nine. So it's going to be three threes are nine or seven sevens are 49. It's going to be three threes are nine or seven sevens are 49. So you try if it's going to be one five eight three into three or one five eight seven into seven. Only one of these two you should try. Because this one has to be a perfect square. In the last stage, you have to do this. The last stage of division. Every time you cannot do this. So from what I've got, it is not 1583 into 3. It's 1587 into 7. Okay. Which will give you 11109 and 0 is the remainder. So we should know this we have learned in standard 8. Uh, yeah. So this is how we find the square root of a perfect square by the long division method. T is this one and then N is equal to not X is equal to N is the uh, variable here, right? You're solving for N. So N is equal to not X is equal to N is equal to minus B plus or minus root D by 2A. Then substitute the values. We just found the square root of this number, which is 797. So 13 plus or minus this number. So it will be 13 plus 797 and 13 minus 797 upon 10. So you get 81 or this one. Now we are finding N. That is the number of terms of the AP that should be considered to get the sum. The number of terms have to be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, some natural number. It cannot be a fraction or negative. So this one is not possible. For this situation, this number is not possible. So N is equal to 81. So therefore, 81 terms of the AP should be added to get some 3969. The first 89 uh, terms. So that means S81. S81 is equal to 3969. The sum of the first 81 terms is equal to 3969. Which the, the third column, second column, or Second column, ah, the two alone. Ah, yeah, you can. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Okay. So all these I've shared with you. So you have the answers with you. The material has this answer. I shared two sets of material with you, one containing 11 pages and another containing six pages. So this is one of the uh, sums in uh, the material having 11 pages. Yeah, online students, answer for this one. What's a quadratic equation for this one? <clears throat> yeah, good, Rajit, for the earlier one. Others? Ma'am, it's 5 n squared minus 77 n minus 1764. 1764, yeah. Come again. 5 n squared uh, minus 77 n. Okay. Minus 1764. Okay. 5 n squared minus 77 n. Yes. Correct. So it's a similar question. It's a similar one. <clears throat> a is 18 and the common difference is this one minus this one. Where are you seeing Arjun? OK, the common difference is a2 minus a1, which is minus two and a half or minus five by two. So here again, we should not go wrong. See here, when the common difference is negative, 
when the common difference is negative, n minus 1 minus 5 by 2, not like that. It is n minus 1 into minus 5 by 2. This one we need to simplify carefully. It's n minus 1 into d. Don't open the bracket like n minus 1 minus 5 by 2. So don't next step should not be this minus 5 by 2 like this and taking LCM. It's n minus 1 into into minus 5 by 2. The minus is not the connecting sign. See here, it's not n minus 1 minus 5 by 2 like this. It is not this. It is n minus 1 into d into d. Minus is not the connecting sign. Minus is not the connecting sign. This is different. N minus 1 minus 5 by 2 is different from N minus 1 into minus 5 by 2. So don't treat this one like this one. You have to multiply. Uh, so minus 5 by 2 into, see it's N minus 1 into D. You'll have to multiply N minus 1 with D. So minus 5 by 2 into N minus 5 N by 2. Then minus 5 by 2 into minus 1 plus 5 by 2. Then this one 36. Then after that LCM, multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators, cross multiply and all that you get a quadratic equation. Here is where we have to be very careful. We could go wrong here. So tell yourself it's multiplication. So multiply this with this. Multiply D with N, multiply D with minus 1. Which gives you these two terms. So then again, it's just, uh, it's similar, it's quadratic uh, and the numbers are large, so we won't split the middle term. We'll use a quadratic formula. Yeah, and minus 126 by 10 is not possible. Negative, so 28. So the first 28, so S28, S28 is equal to minus 441. The sum of the, the sum of the first 28 terms is minus 441. All right. Yeah. So this is the next one. Determine the number of terms in the arithmetic progression. <clears throat> that is, oh, we have an AP here. You should find the number of terms. See, 3, 7, 11, and it goes on till 407. So how many terms are here? How many terms are there in this AP? <clears throat> All right, so maybe your school has given this formula n is equal to l minus a by d plus 1. Do you learn it like this? No, yeah. So even I don't know it like this. Sometimes for the sake of. No, all this does not allow you to think that's it. So I don't use this. This is the formula n is equal to l minus a by d plus 1. Normally used in the other syllabus. Not CBC, so maybe in some cheat or so. They, you know, formally they're given so that it becomes simple for children to approach the answer. We don't do that. Don't don't do it. Okay. So now, how do you find the number of terms? 407 will tell you. Go and ask 407. Whatever is the position of 407 is the number of terms. If supposing 407 is in the 121st place. Okay. Supposing it's in the 121st place. That means there are 121 terms in the AP. The position of 407, the position of 407 in the arithmetic progression will tell you the number of terms in the arithmetic progression. So you should you should use the last term to find the number of terms of the AP. You must use the last term. So this is the equation you should write. A n some the last term of the or you can write L. The last term of the AP is 407. That means A n. 
which term it, uh, is it i don't know so a n some term so a n if you know the position you will say a 10 a 11 if you know it is 11th term you will write a 11 if you know it's the 19th term a 19 if you don't know the position of that term then you should write a n a n so a n is equal to 407 this is what you should write first if you write this you get the answer so a n is what a plus n minus 1 into d is equal to 407 so here we have to uh, solve for n so you have to substitute for a and d we have to find n so substitute for a and d a is 3 and d is 7 minus 3 4 n is unknown work and find the value of n so determine the number of terms in the ap that's the first question then find its 20th term from the end find its 20th term from the end so we'll see this n first see this look at this so this is the equation an is equal to 407 this is the condition see i always you know whenever you working a, a question on arithmetic progression uh, write out what's the value of a and d start with writing the value of a and d write the value of a and d and then your equation an is equal to 407 Like so, I have done this in two ways. Go through both the methods. You have a look, and then I'll talk about. It. We have to find the twentieth term from the end. That's done in two ways. Please go through. all right so we have two ways to find the uh, 20th term from the end either uh, method one is you can write the arithmetic progression in the reverse order write the terms of the ap in the reverse order so then the once you write the ap in the reverse order the 20th term from the beginning is a 20th term from the end because you have written the ap in the reverse order method 1 write the ap in the reverse order so the 20th term from the beginning will be the 20th term from the end that's one method 1 method 2 is the 20th term from the end <clears throat> so supposing uh, there are 50 terms okay okay let me write uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 one second 1 2 3 One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, whatever, fourteen. Okay, or fifteen. Now, how many terms are here? Fifteen terms. Ah, uh, so which is the last term from the end? Last. Uh, sorry. Uh, which is the last term? Fifteen is the last term. Okay, how many terms are there? Fifteen terms are there. So, which is the No, one second. I think I should take a different example. Sorry. So, suppose you say two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty. So, how many terms are here? 
10 terms. Okay, okay, there are 10 terms. Which is the last term? 20. That is the 10th term itself is the last term. So it's like the last term is 10 minus 0. Which is the which? Okay, one minute, one minute. No, I shouldn't ask you that question. One minute. Which is the first term from the end? That should be the question. Sorry, I'll put it this way. Which is the first term from the end? 20 is the first term from the end. How many terms are here? 10 terms are there. And to find the first term from the end, it's not 10 minus 1, the ninth term. It is 10 minus 0. The 10th term itself is the first term from the end. See, this is the position A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6, A7, A8, A9, A10. Okay. Now, which is the first term? Let me tell you my questions. First term from the end, second uh, term from the end, third term from the end, fourth term from the end, fifth term from the end, and so on. Okay. Now the first term from the end is a ten, right? That is the tenth term itself. So it is. It is the first term from the end is the total number of terms is ten minus zero, which is the tenth term itself. Which is the which is the second term from behind? A9, A9. How many terms are there? 10 terms are there. Minus 1. Minus 1. So you don't, supposing you're finding the second term from the end, don't subtract 2 from the number of terms. Subtract 1 less than that. Because the first term from the end, you know, the first to find the first term from the end, you'll take the number of terms and subtract zero because that term itself is the first term from the end. To find the second term from the end, second term from the end, total number of terms 10 minus 1. A9, A9 is the second term from the end. Now, if you want to find the third term from the end, it is not total number of terms 10. It's not this. It's not total number of terms 10 minus I want the third term from the end. So 7, A7. No, A7 is the fourth term from the end. 1, 2, 3. It's a fourth term from the end. A7 is the fourth term from the end. Total number of terms is 10. If you want to find the third term from behind, if you want to find the third term from behind, you know it is one, two, three. This one is the third term from behind. And how will you get this A8? 8, how will you get? 10 minus 2 is 8, right? So whichever term you want from the end, subtract one less from the total number of terms. The total number of terms is 10. If you want the first term from the end, 1 minus 1, 0. Don't subtract anything. So the, the tenth term itself is the first term from behind. Supposing you want the fourth term from behind, the fourth term from behind. How many terms are there? Ten terms are there. You want the fourth term, no? Subtract three. Subtract one less. So seven. A seven. So see here. One, two, three, four. It's the fourth term from behind. So if you want the twentieth uh, term from behind, subtract ninety from the total number of terms. 19 from the total number of terms. That's the second method. That's the second method. So for that, you should not reverse the AP. For that, don't reverse the AP. So which is wherever I worked that. Oh yeah, here. So you find you found N here, right? You found N here, right? So look at this method where we reverse the AP. So then we have 407 and then 403. One minute. One minute. Three, seven, eleven. It goes on. So, what's the common difference? Four, right? Four is a common difference. So, four hundred and seven. Before that, what will you have? Four hundred and three. Before that, three hundred and ninety-nine. Before that, three hundred and ninety-five. Correct. Now, reverse this method. One reverse this. Four hundred and seven. Four hundred and three. Three hundred and ninety-nine. Three hundred and ninety-five. It goes on like this. So what's the first term? 407. What's the common difference? 403 minus 407, which is minus 4, which is minus 4. Now, what do you want to find? 
you want to find the 20th term from the beginning only now because you have reversed the AP. So you want to find the 20th term from the beginning. So find A20, that's all. A20 is A plus 19D. So A is 407 plus 19 into D, which is minus 4. So 407 minus whatever, what is this? 76, uh, whatever. So that's what you see in method one. See, I've reversed the AP. So you'll be wondering how I got these terms. So that's why I showed you this. Now reverse the AP. So 407, 403, 399. So you can see that here. 11, 7, and 3. Correct? I've reversed the AP. So the, com the first term is 407. The common difference is 403 minus 407, which is minus 4. Now A20 you have to find. The 20th term from the beginning now. A plus 19D, so 331. So the 20th term from the end, we have found it in this way, but then what is 331 actually for the AP? It's a three. So it's the 20th term from behind. Is that understood? That's the first method. In the second method, in the second method, what you have to do is how many terms are there in this AP? We already found that. That's a question. That's a question. Find the number of terms of the arithmetic progression is a question here. So we already found the number of terms. We already have n. We know how many terms are there in this AP because that was a question which you've already answered. So this AP has 102 terms. Now you want to find the 20th term from behind. So 102 minus 19. 102 minus 19. You should not do 102 minus 20. One less than 20 is 19. So 102 minus 19. So th that's 88, 83. So the 83rd term, the 83rd term, that is the 83rd term from the beginning is the 20th term from the end. Take the total number of terms. Step one, subtract one less than what you want to find. You want to find the 20th term from behind. Take one less than that, 19. So 102 minus 19 gives you 83. Now, what is this 83? What is this uh, 20? The 83rd term from the beginning is nothing but the 20th term from the end. That's the meaning. The 83rd term from the beginning is the 20th uh, term from behind. So you identified that you have to find the 83rd term. So find A83, A83, which is 330. See, in the alternate method, I've repeated this. See, the thing is, this is one answer. I've repeated this in the alternate method. I've just repeated this procedure. Don't get confused. This is this is one answer. OK, this is the alternate method we have, where I've worked this again. I've worked this again. So determine the number of terms. We found n. So in the alternate method also, I'm finding using the same working, I found n. OK, the second question is the 20th term from behind. So in this method, I've reversed the AP. So I'm finding A20. But be careful, D is minus 4. In this method, I'm not reversing. In the alternate method, I'm not reversing the AP. I know that there are 102 terms in the AP. So the 20th term from behind is 102 minus 19, which is 83. What is this 83? 83 is? The 83rd term from the beginning is nothing but the 20th term from behind. It's the same. Forwards the 83rd term is equal to the 20th term from behind. So find A83. You can see we get the same answer. How many terms are there? 10 terms. Which is the third term from behind? OK, so third term from behind is A8. The third term from behind is A8. Now, how will we find the corresponding term from the beginning? So total number of terms is 10. Total number of terms, 10. 
you want to find the third term from behind. So subtract two. Eight. So the eighth term from the beginning. See eight. eight. The eighth term from the beginning is a third term from behind. Which is the second term from behind? Which is the second term? <clears throat> second term from behind. Second term from behind is A9. Okay, so from behind it's a second term. Now I want to know which term it is forwards. So second term from behind, no? So to, you should always use the total number of terms. Total number of terms, 10. Second term from, from behind. So I'll subtract only one. One less I'll subtract. So it's nine. So the ninth term from the beginning is the second term from the end. Which is the seventh term from the end? Seventh term from the end or from behind? Seventh term. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so seventh term from behind is A4. See, I've counted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. A4. <clears throat> A4 is the seventh term from behind. From, from uh, the beginning. So total number of ter terms, 10. I want the seventh term from behind. So I'll subtract only six. Sir. Four. So the fourth term from the beginning. The fourth term from the beginning is the seventh term from the end. So that's what I've done here. All right, online students. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. Next one, which term of the arithmetic progression is whatever you see there? So now when you have certs like this, you must try to express them as mixed certs. OK, otherwise you will see that. See, it's not like this. The common difference is not is not root 45 minus root 5 which is root 40, no. It's not this. It's not this. So root 5, comma, root of, what is 45? 9 fives are, or you can do this. Not comfortable, you can do this. 3, uh, 15 times. 3, fives are, 5, ones are. So root 45 is 3 into 3 into 5, comma. Like that, you find for 125, you'll get 5 into 5 into 5. Do the same thing for that. And then uh, find out for uh, 14045. Okay. 5, 5 twos are, 5 eights are 40, uh, 0, 5 nines are 45. Don't forget the 0. So 5, uh, 5 is a 25, 6 is a, oh my God. Sorry, <laughs> not 5 now. Not 5 now. Yeah, so you should find this number. Now this one may be a prime number. This one may be a prime number like 43 into 43 or maybe 53 into 53. Find out, tell me. So 53 into 53 into 5. Yeah, but I blurted. I shouldn't have said that. So it's 53 because, see, you should guess all this because uh, now 2,809 lies between what? 40 square. 40 into 40 is 1,600 and 50 into 50 is uh, 2,500 and 16 to 60 is 3600. So clearly this number lies between uh, these two perfect squares, 50 square and 60 square. 2804 is here. 2804 lies between 2500 and 3600. So what do we have between 50 square and 60 square? Ah, 09. Yeah, 09. So what do we have between so 50 square is 2500 and 60 square is 3600. Now this number 2809 lies between 50 square and 60 square. Okay, so now between 50 square and 60 square, we have 53 square and 57 uh, square, which can have nine in the units place, which can have nine in the units place. Because 53 into 53, three threes are nine you'll get. Or 57 into 57, uh, three threes are nine. I'm sorry, 57 into 57, seven sevens are 49, okay? But it cannot be 57 because 57 is a multiple of three. Again, test of divisibility. Uh, seven plus five, 12. Seven plus five is 12. So 57 is divisible by three. 12 is divisible by three, which means 57 is divisible by three. So it can 
then if 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 it is 57 then i should be able to divide this by 3 but i'm not able to because 8 plus 2 10 10 plus 9 19 test of divisibility by 3 2 8 0 9 2 8 10 10 9 19 2 8 0 9 is not divisible by 3 then how can it be 57 57 is divisible by 3 it cannot be 57 then so it has to be 53 so this mind work you can do it faster now i'm taking this long to tell you this you can do it faster so you can you can easily make out 2809 is between uh, 2500 and 3600 then between so 50 square 60 square so 9 it should end with 9 so 53 57 57 is divisible by 3 so that's not possible so 53 53 is a prime number so 53 into 53 so it has to be 53 here 53 time. you would have to check that you know i'm just telling you it can be so we should do this multiplication and check so 53 53 times and 53 ones so this one is square root of 5 square root of 3 3s are 9 9 5s are 45 square root of 5 5s are 25 5s are 125 goes on like that square root of uh what's that 5 into 53 into 53 so now express them as mixed thirds square root of 5 comma 3 root 5 comma 5 root 5 like this 53 root 5 53 root 5 so express the thirds as mixed thirds by using that prime factorization method so that's the first step whenever you have thirds you should be able to express them as mixed thirds otherwise it's not the question will be given like that so now the first term is root 5 the common difference is 3 root 5 minus root 5 which is 2 root 5 now the question is uh, which term is uh, so that means an is equal to 53 root 5 which term i don't know which term so an some term of the ap so an is equal to not sn children sn is sum to n terms this is not sum to n terms this is a which term it's a particular term of the arithmetic progression which term is 53 root 5 which term is 53 root 5 so that's not the sum to n terms that's a particular term of the ap so an is equal to 53 root 5 and then you know what to do a plus n minus 1 into d is equal to 53 root 5 and we have to substitute for a and d and find the value of n or if your school is using the formula anybody online if your school is using the formula n is equal to l minus a by d plus 1 you can use this also you can use this where l is uh, the last term uh, a is the first term and d is the common difference no but i prefer this method okay so you can see the answer here so a d a n a n is this one so a n meaning a plus n minus 1 into d is 53 root 5 a n a n is this one so a n is 53 root 5 navya all right oh, your eyes are wandering so a n is 53 root 5 uh, which means a, a n means a plus n minus 1 into d is equal to 53 root 5 then substitute for a and d correct so how do you simplify this this root 5 will go here as minus root 5 and then this 2 root 5 you can bring it for division it's into 2 root 5 it can come down for division to the other side it's the same no see suppose that that is that that is because here it is uh, in that formula in this formula n by 2 n by 2 of 2a plus n minus 1 into d it is a part of addition you have to multiply so there is an expression here there is an expression here and it's a sum of these two expressions so this d cannot go down to the other side for division 
This D here cannot go down to the other side for division. It's in multiplication here, n minus 1 into D. But this one is not free. Correct. It's 2A plus n minus 1 into D. So you have to simplify this one. 2A plus n minus 1 into D you have to simplify. So this one is not free to go to the other side for division. Whereas in uh, A plus uh, n minus 1 into D is equal to that, uh, what is that, 53 root uh, 5. This, okay, so this is root 5 plus uh, n minus 1 into 2 root 5 is equal to 53 root 5. So this one is addition, right? So you can transpose this. So n minus 1 into 2 root 5 is equal to 53 root 5 minus root 5, correct? Then this is one, this one becomes 52 root 5. 52 root 5 is equal to n minus 1 into 2 root 5. Now you can make out, no? This is in multiplication. You This is free to go down for division. Or you can even multiply this with this, this with this and root. It will give you the same answer. You can also multiply. You will get the same answer. So root 5 and root 5 gets cancelled. 52 by 2 is 26. So 26 plus 1, 27. The 27th term of the AP is this one. This one is the 27th term of the AP. Now here it is. Is it a term of the AP? So it may be, it may not be. Here the question is which term of the AP? So that, that means it is a term. Which term? So it is a term. Is this one a term of the AP? So you'll have to let us assume. Let's assume that a n is equal to 3, 2 by 3. Let's just assume. We don't know. If a n is equal to, see, when can you say a n is equal to 3 by, when can you say that a n is equal to 3, 2 by 3? Yeah, when you know it is a part of the AP and you have to find which term of the AP it is. Here the question is, is it a term? So you don't know. So if possible, you can start like that. If possible, let A and B 3, 2 by 3 and do the same procedure. Like you did here, like you did here, same thing. Substitute for A and D and find N. Substitute for A and D, you know the first term, you know the first term, you know the common difference. And find N. If you get an acceptable value for n, so if n is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, any natural number, then it is a term. If you get a fraction or a negative value, it's not a term of the AP. Because if, the, if it's a term of an AP, if it is theta, if it is a term of the AP, then it should have a position, right? And the position cannot be a fraction or the position cannot be negative. Yeah. So on working, we get n is 18. So yes, it is the 18th term of the arithmetic regression. So if you if it is an, if it were minus 18 or anything negative or a fraction, then it's not a term of the AP. So we have to substitute for A and D. See you. A and D. A is uh, 5 by 6 and D is uh, 1 by 3. I'm sorry, 1 by 6. You can see I've transposed this one. Then this n minus 1. In, see, simplifying is left to you, children. So it's not that you have to do it like this, right? Simplifying is left to you. You can probably have a different way of solving this also. So I've cancelled 6 and 6 here on both the sides. I'll explain as much possible till, till uh, 8.45 because then after that it's going to become boring. You will not keep, I don't know, I don't, I assume so because so then I will start, we'll take up a uh, new set of questions and we'll work that and we'll continue this discussion in the next class. Nothing is, in AP, nothing is like related. It's not that if you don't know this, you cannot do that. It's not like that. If you just have, you just need to have that basic introduction to the chapter, which we already had. So, having got that introduction, you can answer any, you can ask, answer any question from any part of the chapter, from behind, from middle, 
anything you can answer. It's not that you haven't learned the questions which are in the beginning or like which are in exercise, whatever, whatever, whatever. So you cannot do this. Not like that. With that introduction, you can answer any question from this chapter. Yeah, very important. If but if you all say that it's not boring, you're ready to listen. I can keep I can I actually I want to finish it by I want to go on like this till 930. Explain till 930. If it's OK with you, I can continue. It's fine. Navi is already bored. <laughs> yeah. No, no, you need to focus. Ritika. She's asking you what shall we do? What will tell her? <laughs> Hmm. Online students, shall I continue till 9.30? Shall I explain all the sums till 9.30? Or you want to, uh, you know, like hear to a particular point and then start working some other sums? I will start working the sums. Okay, others, I'm taking a poll now. I'm working and I'm still working the sums. Okay, Florentina? Ma'am, you can explain, ma'am. Okay, Danya? Working sums, ma'am. So, one, two, three. Sorry? Okay. okay. So, that's why I think I did it fair. I said till 8.45, I'll explain. From 8.45 to 9.30, we'll take up some questions and we'll work them. All right? Okay. Fine. I'll go on like this till 8.45. And then from 8.45 to 9.30, we'll work some questions. All right. All right, so again, very important question. Very simple. Everything in AP is simple for you to understand. Whenever, you know, like I say simple, simple not from my point of view. Simple from your point of view. When I'm talking to you, even I feel like a student. I am a student. This is what I'm learning every day. So from your from our point of view, it is simple. It's just the way you understand it. Now, a n is given 6 n minus 7. Now, what is a 1 then? What is a 1? 6 into 1 minus 7, which is 6 minus 7, which is minus 1. What is a 2? a 2 is 6 into 2 minus 7, 12 minus 7, 5. This is enough. Just find a 1 and a 2. That's enough. If you know the first term and the common difference of the AP, you can answer any question related to the arithmetic progression. You just need to know two values. First term, common difference. If you know the first term and the common difference, any question can be answered. So that's why we found only A1 and A2 because you want the first term. So we found A1. And then you want to know the common difference. For that, you need to have A2. Yeah, so now what is uh, the common difference? A2 minus A1. The second term minus the first term. So 5 minus 1, 5 minus minus 1. Be careful here. Second term is 5. The first term is minus 1. 5 minus minus 1. 5 plus 1, 6. The common difference is 6. Okay. Now we have to find Sn. Sn means in the Sn formula, n is n. You should substitute for a and d. That's all. Sn means in the Sn formula, we know we have only three unknowns, a, n, and d. And a, n, and d. In Sn, n you cannot replace with anything because n is n. Sn, n is n only. So substitute for a and d. So Sn is equal to, uh, you can use both the formulae. I'll do it both the ways. First, n by 2 of 2a plus n minus 1 into d. This is the formula. Okay, so n is n by 2 of 2a, 2 into minus 1 plus n minus 1, n is n only, into d6, correct? So n by 2, sn is equal to, right? so sn is equal to n by 2 of minus 2 uh, plus 6n minus 6. So n by 2 bracket 6n minus 8, correct? n by 2, 2 is common, right? So 2. So 3n minus 4, correct? And 2 and 2 gets cancelled. 
So it is 3n into n, 3n square minus 4 into n, 4n. And we've already understood that the expression for Sn is always quadratic in n. Yeah, she remembers. We remember, right? The expression for Sn is always quadratic in n. The expression for a n is always linear in n. You can see it. It's given in the question 6 n minus 7. The expression for a n is always linear in n. 6 n minus 7. The expression for s n is always quadratic in n. 3 n square minus 4 n. So this is s n finished. So s n means what? In s n formula, we have three unknowns a, n, and d. Don't substitute for n. You should substitute for a and d. So we have to have the values of a and d, and that's what we prepared initially. We found a1, we found a2. That's it. The other way of getting Sn is using the other formula. Using the other formula. So what is a here? We got children minus 1, right? And d is 6, right? So what's the other formula? Sn is equal to n by 2 of the first term plus the last term. Correct? So n, n is n only, n by n by 2 of the first term. What's the first term? Minus 1. Minus 1. Plus the last term, plus 6n minus 7. An. An is 6n minus 7. So n by 2, bracket 6n minus 8. This is what we got, no? And then we took out two common. We took out two common. 3n minus 4. Two cancels n into 3n is 3n square minus 4. Same thing. So you can use any one of the two formulae. All right. So Sn means, to find Sn means in the Sn formula, uh, in case of A and D, you have to give some values. N is N. Or you can use the other formula also n by 2 of the first term plus the last term, where the last term is 6n minus 7. A n it is, so 6n minus 7. Yeah, I have got both the methods, so. So whatever I explained is here. Now here, in the earlier question, so what you are seeing, you know, whenever we do a chapter here, I have arranged the question in a particular sequence. These will be scattered in the book. These questions are picked from various various books, meaning the most popular ones, R.D. Sharma and Agarwal, and also from Western banks like Oswald and other stuffs. So I have handwritten all these questions in a chronological order, my own order. And so you will see a connection between the sums. From where we started, you will see a connection between the sums. It's not that you learn something and something and then something. You will see a sequence here. OK. So now it's S15. So now we understand what to do. S15 means what in the formula? We have A, N, and D. N is 15. A and D, I don't know. So I have to find A and D first. And how will I find A and D? I'll find A1 and I'll find A2. Then if I know A1 and A2, D is equal to A2 minus A1, and that's it. So this one should run in your mind. So immediately you can write that. So S15 is it? Or you can also, okay. So A1 is how much? 4 into 1 plus 1, so 5. A2 is 4 into 2, 8 plus 1, 9. So common difference is 4. So method 1 is S15 is equal to N by 2, 15 by 2 of 2A, 2 into 5, 10 plus n minus 1, 10 my, oh, sorry, 15 minus 1, 14 into d. So 15 minus 2 into 14 for the 56 plus 10, 66, 33, 33, 330 and uh, 115. So 445, 445. I hope my multiplication is right. Oh no, 495. 330 and uh, oh, 165, 165. Yeah, 165. So 495, not 115. 495. All right, 495. So uh, the other way of doing this, S15 is equal to N by 2 of the first term plus the last term. Like this also you can do. 
एस फिफ्टीन इज इक्वल टू दिस आर द फॉर्मूला एस फिफ्टीन इज इक्वल टू एन बाई टू इन इन टू द फर्स्ट ओके यू कैन राइट वन एस एन इज इक्वल टू एन बाई टू ऑफ द फर्स्ट टर्म प्लस द लास्ट टर्म सो एस फिफ्टीन विल बी इक्वल टू फिफ्टीन बाई टू ऑफ द फर्स्ट टर्म प्लस द लास्ट टर्म टू दिफ्टीन टर्म फॉर सम टू फिफ्टीन टर्म्स मीनिंग द लास्ट टर्म इज दिफ्टीन टर्म now 15 by 2 15 by 2 now for this if you using this formula you don't have to find d also if you using this one you don't you don't even have to find d 15 by 2 into the first term what's the first term 5 plus you need to find a 15 for this you should find a 15 what is a 15 if you don't have to find you don't for this formula for this formula you don't have to find this you should find a 15 what is a 15 a plus 14 d yes or no A plus fourteen D. A plus n minus one into D. Okay, so fourteen into D. Oh, for so fourteen D, we'll need four then. Okay, sorry. So fourteen into. Sorry, to find this one, we'll need D. One second. Yeah. So find A fifteen. A plus fourteen D. So A is five uh, plus fourteen into four. Ah, uh, fifty-six plus five, sixty-one, sixty-one. So put that here, sixty. So fifteen by two into sixty-six. What we got here? So to find S fifteen, you can use this formula or this formula. Right? Okay. Yeah, I have both the methods. Which is the first negative term of the arithmetic progression? So you can see that the terms are decreasing in order, decreasing two twenty nine, then small two twenty three. So it's from big to small the numbers, two twenty nine, two twenty three, two seventeen. So somewhere the numbers will become smaller and smaller, and then it will become negative, and from there on it will be negative only. So if you write AP like this, twenty five, twenty, fifteen, ten, five, zero, then minus five, minus ten, minus fifteen. From there on, it's going to be negative only. After point, we will get only negative numbers, negative or integers, negative integers. So, which is the first negative term of the AP? Which is the first negative term? So here it is minus five. Minus five is the first negative term. From there on, all the terms are negative. But which is the first negative term is the question. So for that, you need to write a condition. That is, they are asking you which term. That means a n is the first negative term. Well, we know that negative terms are less than zero. When something is less than zero, it's negative. So the question is, the question is which term? Which term meaning a n is negative meaning is less than zero. That's the condition you should write. Always write that condition first. So now using this, you can work. You can substitute here and just work it. You should write the condition first. So which is the first negative term? So term meaning a n negative term meaning it should be less than zero. So which is the first negative term? So a plus n minus one into d. A plus n minus one into d is less than zero. A is two twenty nine plus n minus one into d. Two twenty three minus two twenty nine minus six is less than zero. Right? So N minus one. You are working with an inequality, so we'll have to be careful. N minus one into minus six is less than minus two twenty nine. All right. So now multiply, multiply this, multiply this minus with the terms inside. Okay. So minus because it doesn't behave like it doesn't behave like an equality. It doesn't behave like an equality. So multiply this minus six inside. So minus six n. Plus six is less than minus two twenty nine. See what I'm trying to say is when you're working with an inequality, if it's positive, transpose negative. If it's negative, transpose positive. Don't do anything else. Don't do multiplication, division because it's different when you're multiplying by a positive number, negative number. It is different when you're dividing by a positive number, negative number. It's different. So don't do if when you don't avoid multiplication, division as much possible. Okay, try to. You can transpose 
addition becomes subtraction subtraction becomes addition that's fine but when multiplication division try to avoid so i multiplied inside so minus 6 into n is minus 6n plus 6 okay now what is it minus 6n is less than minus 229 yeah plus 6 minus 6 the inequality will not change minus 6n is less than minus 235 okay now now be very careful if you change the signs on both the sides don't take this minus see when you're taking something for division if it is positive it's fine if it's negative it will behave differently so now you want to before you take anything for division now you know there's no choice you have to bring down this 6 or minus 6 for division but make it positive <laughs> before you take it for division okay so now you want to change the signs on both the sides then you want to change the signs on both the sides correct now look at this uh if is this correct minus 10 is uh, greater than minus 20 is this correct is this correct yeah this is true this is true minus 10 is greater than minus 20 yeah it's true now i change the signs on both the sides 10 greater than 20 no this is false but normally we change the signs now when we have minus x is equal to minus 10 x is equal to 10 we change the signs on both the sides that's fine with an equality not with an inequality in an inequality when you change the signs on both the sides and you write 10 greater than 20 it's false now what was once true is now false that means here when you change the signs on both the sides 6n is greater than 235 when you change the signs on both the sides reverse the inequality if it's less than it becomes greater than if it's greater than it becomes less than reverse the inequality Minus ten is greater than minus twenty is true, but when you change the signs on both the sides, ten twenty. When you cancel the minus signs, it is ten less than twenty. This is true. So when you change the signs on both the sides, when you cancel the minus on both the sides, reverse the inequality. So minus six n minus two thirty five. Six n two thirty five less than becomes greater than. Now you take six for division. N is uh, uh, greater than two thirty five divided by six. So n is greater than um, six. Threes are eighteen. What's the remainder? Five is the remainder. Then six nines are fifty-four. One by six. N is greater than thirty-nine. One by six. That means what is what is the number that is just greater than thirty-nine? One by six. Which is the number that is just greater than thirty-nine? One by six. Forty. So the fortieth term of this AP is the first negative term, and from there on, all the terms will be negative. The fortieth term is the first negative term. The forty-first term is negative. The forty-second is negative. Forty-third is negative. All are negative. The first negative term is the fortieth term. So here you 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 should not expect. See, it's n greater than what? So this one can be any positive value. It can be fraction, decimal, whatever you get. It should be positive. So n is greater than thirty-nine. N is not equal to thirty-nine. N is greater than thirty-nine. One by six. Here n can take a pos any positive value fraction also. So the fortieth term, I hope my calculation is right. So the fortieth term is the first negative term. The fortieth term is the first negative term. <clears throat> Now the same thing. I'll just supposing you transpose like this. So supposing you transpose like these are the only two things you can do. So I said you please multiply this minus six within the bracket. Don't bring the six for division. See, a positive is fine. You are bringing a positive six for division is fine. If it's negative, don't do that because there are many conditions here. So you work with few so that you can remember them. If you want to experiment in the exam, you will go wrong. Now supposing you transpose, you want you do this six. Plus two twenty nine is less than six n like this. You are bringing the numbers to one side and taking the n to that side. You can do that. Transposing plus minus minus plus is fine. Dividing by a negative thing only you should take care. That's why we change the signs on both the sides and then we took the six for division. Now supposing you transpose like this, six plus two twenty nine less than six n. Am I right? I'm shifting that. I can do. So this is what two thirty five. 
is less than 6n. So 235 by 6 is less than n. So that is 39, 1 by 6. Huh? That's what we got, right? Is less than n. So now understand how to work this. Supposing you have uh, 5 less than uh, 5 less than what? 10. If you change, if you want to change the inequality, if you want to change the inequality, exchange these two. You put the 10 here and put the 5 here, it will be true. So now 39, 1 by 6 less than n. I'm not even understand. So I want to bring n here and take 39, 1 by 6 here. So if n comes here and 39, 1 by 6 comes here, the inequality is reversed. Let this one, this one becomes greater than. If you want to shift, see, like I told you here, 5 is less than 10. If you want to write 10 here and 5 here, reverse inequality, 10 greater than 5. So I want to take I want to take this uh, 235 by 6 to the right hand side and n to the left hand side. See, both are positive. 235 by 6 and n both are positive. My examples are in my example also both are positive. So I'm taking n 10 here and 5 here. I have to reverse inequality. So if I want to take this here and this one here, I can do that. N and where should I write? So I can take N here and I can write 235 by 6 here, but I should reverse inequality. N greater than. So N is greater than 39, 1 by 6. That means the 40th term is the first negative term. So in what you have to remember, See in this working, in this working, uh, see here, this one comes here and this one comes here, no? Reverse inequality. The inequality is reversed. So I've written al alternate calculation. If you want to cancel the minus sign on both the sides, if you want to cancel the minus sign on both the sides, also you should reverse inequality. So two things you remember, that's all. Two things you remember. If you want to, if both are positive, if both are positive, you want to take this one here and this one here when both are positive. Do that, but reverse inequality. If this is positive and this is pos positive, but you want to exchange their places. You exchange it, but reverse inequality. The other thing is, the other thing is, if you have uh, negative terms on both the sides and you want to cancel them, you want to cancel the minus sign. You cancel it, but reverse inequality. Excuse me, ma'am. Yeah, DP. Ma'am, I'm done. Uh, done till where, DP? Ma'am, I have fi uh, finished writing the algebra you have done, and uh, the homework also I have finished, and the mensuration uh, worksheets also I have finished both of them. But I didn't. But then two of the questions I was not able to understand in the last one, three. So I left two of the questions there. And one, uh, the worksheet number three, second question, second Roman, the last bit, uh, I have not understood it. So that small bit I have left. So only three questions. The tabular ones you finished where uh, yes, area, I think length is given. You'll have to find the breadth yes, and all that. Rectangle length, breadth perimeter, square, a side perimeter, and triangle also side perimeter. I have finished those. Very good, very good. All right, Deepthi. Thank you, mom. Bye. Yeah, good night. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, children. So I was telling you, if you want to cancel the minus on both the sides, go ahead. Cancel the minus sign. Reverse inequality. All right. One minute. I'll just see how much more in this. Oh, it's going to take a long time. So till where have you finished children? Uh, so yes, the other day, so you people haven't worked anything, right? Neela no, you may work on the material. Neela, you work on it, you work on it. till where have you finished? This one fully you finished, huh? 27 all. You, you haven't started. 
Uh, online students, how much have you completed, Florentina? Madhumita, have you started working this material? Ma'am, I finished the first set of questions and I did uh, 11 questions in the second set, ma'am. So I'm almost done with it. So this one you're done? The, the, yes. This particular thing? Okay. First material, Rajat? I'm done. Uh, I've done 15 sums, ma'am. In the first material? Yes. Uh, Madhumita, today was a holiday, is it? How could you finish so much? No, ma'am, I didn't go to school today because I was sick. Okay. So you did marathon from the morning, is it, with <laughs> arithmetic progressions? Yes, ma'am. I worked for quite a long time. Very nice. Okay. What about Danya? Completed the first set until 25 questions, ma'am. Until 25. From the second one. Second one has so many questions, huh? So 25. No, ma'am, seven questions. Actually, I was writing the question in number order. So seven questions in the second. Okay, fine. All right. Is this fine, Jalen? I'll just do this one and uh, stop. Find the middle terms of the arithmetic progression. Find the middle terms. So there can be one term in the middle or two terms in the middle. That depends on the number of terms the arithmetic progression has. OK, the arithmetic progression can have one middle term or two middle terms, not three like because if it is three, it is one only. If it has even number of terms, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If it has even number of ter terms, 8 and 1, 2 and 7, 3 and 6. So the, these are the two middle terms. If it has odd number of terms, if the arithmetic progression has odd number of terms, 1, 9, 2, 8, 3, 7, 4, 6, there's the middle most term. There's the middle most term. So if the arithmetic progression has even number of terms, even number of terms. So here n is 8, no? It has even number of terms. Then there'll be two middle terms. If the here the arithmetic progression has odd number of terms, then it has only one middle term. So how do you make out the middle, the middle most term or the middle most terms? So when it's even, when it's even, n by 2 and n by 2 plus 1 are the two middle terms. When there are even number of terms, even, so here 8, no? 8 by 2, 4, and 4 plus 1, 5. n is 8 in the first case, n is 8. So 8 by 2, the fourth term, and 8 by 2 plus 1, 4 plus 1. 8 by 2 plus 1, n by 2 plus 1. 8 by 2 is 4, 4 plus 1. So 4 consecutive terms, 4 and 5. So the fourth term and the fifth term, if n is 8, 8 by 2, the fourth term, and 8 by 2 plus 1, not 8 plus 1 by 2, that will become 9 by 2, not 8 plus 1 by 2, 8 by 2 plus 1. So the fifth term, these will be the two middle terms. If n is 9, if n is 9, 9 you should not divide by 2. Make it even n plus 1, 10 divided by 2, n plus 1, 9 plus 1, 10 by 2, 5. The fifth term is the middle most term. If n is odd, make it even first. n is 9, 9 by 2 I should not do. I'll make it even, n plus 9 plus 1, 10, now it's even, divide by 2. The fifth term is the middle most term. When n is 8, it's even, no, so divide by 2. 8 by 2, 4, and the next one, 5. That's what is n by 2 plus 1. If it is even, you should find two terms. If it is odd, you should find only one term. Okay. So this is how you find the middle terms of the AP. If n is, uh, say, 93, it's odd. There's only one middle term. So the middle term will be n plus 1. Make it even by 2. So 93 plus 1 by 2, 94 by 2, which is the 47th term. 
but if n is 92 92 by 2 what is 92 by 2 46 and the next term 47 so that is what is 92 by 2 plus 1 46 plus 1 47 so these will be the two middle terms hmm. Yeah. So find the middle terms of the AP. So to to find the middle terms, you should know the value of n. To find the middle terms, you should know the value of n. And who will tell you the value of n? Minus 176. The last term will tell you the value of n. So use minus 176. An is equal to minus 176. An is equal to minus 176. Find the value of n. Find the value of n. And then n is 50, even. So 50 by 2, 25. 50 by 2 plus 1, 25 plus 1, 26. So the 25th term and the 26th term are the two middle terms. Now what's the question? Find the middle terms. Okay, you should find the middle terms. You should find the middle terms. So you should find A25 and A26. Find the middle terms. So you should find A25 and A26. That's A plus 24D and A plus 25. Brilliant. So we'll continue discussing this in the next class on Thursday. Now we'll just start working something. The other one was 88, so let me do this. Yeah, do this one. Yes, children, online students, please take down this question and solve it. So now I can make out how much we have all understood. And students have completed more number of uh, answers must do it more quickly.
You are done? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, what's the answer? What's the answer? 2n plus 1, ma'am. 2n plus 1, is it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Even I got the same answer, ma'am. Sanya, okay. Okay, uh, Krishmi, how will you express uh, the tenth term of an AP is 21? How will you express that? A10 is equal to 21. So, what's what do you get out of this? First, A10 is 21 means what? A plus what is AN? A plus N minus 1 into D. So, A plus no, no, AN is A plus N minus 1 into D, right? Okay, this is A10. So A10 will be A10 will be A plus 10 minus 1 into D. A plus 10 minus 1 into D is equal to 21. So A plus 9D is equal to 21. This is one equation. Is one equation. See, you don't know A or D here. You don't know anything. You, you, we do not know the value of A or D. You can only get equations like this. The second one, the sum of its first 10 terms. S10 is equal to 120. And what is S10? What is Sn? N by 2. That means 10 by 2. Of 2A plus N minus 1, 10 minus 1 into D. We don't know the values of A and D is equal to 120. So these are the two equations you will get. You must solve these two equations and find the values of A and D. And hence, Find a n. Do it. Solve these two equations and find the values of A and D. A is 3 and D is 2. Yeah, you're right, uh, Madhumita and Danya, both of you, very good. Finished? Got it? So what is one information given children? The 10th term is 21. You must construct an equation using this information. What do you mean by 10th term is 21? A10 is equal to 21. So from that you get an equation. Then what's the next uh, next one? Sum of the first terms is 120. Sorry, sum of its first 10 terms is 120. That means S10 is equal to 120. So how do you express S10? N by 2, 10 by 2 of 2A. A and D we don't know. So 2A plus N minus 1, 10 minus 1 into D. D I don't know. Is equal to uh, 120. So when you work this, you will get another equation in A and D. You must solve these two equations and find the values of A and D and hence find A and I haven't solved children. I haven't solved. You should solve it. Yeah. First.
Confit, what are your portions? You say you told me your portions the other day, no? What are what are your portions? Statistics? Polynomials? Polynomials, right? Probability. The elements. And for uh, cannabis, your portions, your uh, worksheet, or whatever your portions, statistics, huh? Oh. And children, this is over. Online students, is this over? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, this is your next question. Sorry? Oh, the answer is 2n plus 1. Find the nth term, so a n, 2n plus 1, that's all. Finished? This is the next question. Done, online students.
Yes, online students. Ma'am, I got eight and minus two. Eight and minus two. Yes, ma'am. Right, Madhamita, very good. Okay, so understanding the information given is important. Once you understand that, the answer is very easy. So please listen. Please listen. The sum of the first n terms, that means Sn, the sum of the first n terms of an AP is 4n squared plus 2n. Okay. All right. Find the nth term of this AP. Now let's find S1. What is S1? 4 into 1 squared plus 2 into 1. And what is it? 4 plus 2, which is 6. And what is S1? The sum to 1 terms. That means the first term only it is. No, sum to 1 term. S1 meaning the sum of the first term. No, it doesn't make any sense. So A1. A1 is 6. Correct? Now let's find S2. What is S2? 4 into 2 squared plus 2 into 2, wherever there's n, use 2. So 16. <clears throat> Correct? Correct? No, 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 no. Stop working, children. Listen to me. Now, S2 is 20. What do you mean by S2? S2 is the, su the sum of the first two terms. That means A1 plus A2. S2 means what? S2 means the sum of the first two terms. That means A1 plus A2. That S2 is nothing but A1 plus A2. S3 means A1 plus A2 plus A3. S4 means A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4. So S2 means uh, S2 is 20, which means A1 plus A2 is 20. But what is A1? 6. 6 plus A2 is equal to 20. So A2 is equal to 20 minus 6, which is 14. So now we got A1 and A2. Next, find D because we always need A and D to proceed with any answer. We need A and D. Now we found A and D. D is A2 minus A1, 14 minus 6, 8. Now find the nth term of the AP, A n, which is A plus n minus 1 into D. A is 6 plus n minus n is n only into D. So 6 plus 8 n minus 8. So 8 n minus 2. So remember to answer any question, you need the values of A and D. Without that, you cannot do anything. Uh, otherwise, like the earlier one, uh, you should be given two different sets of information with the help of which you can construct two equations. Sometimes you will not have A and D and you cannot find also. Then in that case, the, the information will be like, uh, you will get two in, uh, equations. You can solve the two equations and find the values of A and D. So whenever, well, listen, listen, whenever we have a n or s n, whenever we have a n or s n, in a n, if you find a1, a2, you'll directly get a1, a2. But, is, but in s n, if you find s1 and s2, they're not a1 and a2 straight away. s1 is a1, but s2 is not a2. s2 is a1 plus a2. If a n is given, n1, you can find a1. n is 2, you can find a2. A1, A2 and D you will get. But if you find S1 and S2 using Sn, if you find S1 and S2, S1 is A1, but S2 is A1 plus A2. So there you should be careful. Like that you should find S, uh, sorry, A2 and then find D. All right. Yeah, please complete this, children.
Understood? All of you? Completed online students? Completed now. Okay. Yeah. No, we'll do such sums another day once again. Mm. Try this one. How many numbers between 88 and 993 are divisible by 11? How many numbers between 88 and 993 are divisible by 11? So is 88 included? No, oh, because man. between, yeah, between. So no, 88 is not included. And 993, if it, it's not a multiple, but even if it were a multiple, it, a multiple, it's not included. So between 88 and 993. So the first term will be what? 80? No, how many numbers between Nine, this are divisible by 11? 99 will be the first term. Yeah, 99. So the uh, the sequence of numbers between 88 and 993 that are divisible by 11 that are divisible by 11 are, shouldn't say R, is the sequence is 99, 110, 121, so on till divide 993 by 11. So 11 nines are 99, zero is the remainder, three comes down, three comes down, so add a zero. Okay, so now what is 11 into 90? 990. So that will be the last term. You do, you do 11 into 91, you will get more than now. You will, see, you can make what now, 11 into 90 is what, 990, and that's 993. Now we should find how many numbers. So who will tell you how many are there? Once you know the AP, once you know the AP, who will tell you how many numbers are there? 990 will tell you. So we should take 990. AN is 990. So A plus N minus 1 into D is equal to 990. A is 99 plus N minus 1 into D, which is 11, is equal to 990. Work this and find the value of N. Mom, L is 82, mom. 82, mom. 82. Okay, yeah, right. Finished, Navya? You completed? Got it? Okay.
Shall we go to the next one, children? Online students? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Find the sum of all three digit natural numbers that leave remainder six when divided by 11. Should find the sum of all three digit natural numbers that leave remainder six when divided by 11. So let's just write because three digit no, so let, let's write the multiples of 11 first. Three digit multiples of eleven. No? So three digit, where does it start? One ten. But you take one number before that. I'll tell you why. Take one or two numbers before that. Ninety nine. 99 will do or what's before that 88. You can take 88 also. Take a few numbers before the first number. Whenever you have this remainder six remainder, no, take a few numbers before the first number. So actually 110 is the first number, but we'll take one before that. So 99 to be safe, we'll take another one before that 88, 88, 99, 110, 121, so on three digit. So 990. We just found no 990. 990. All right. Now, and the question is not to take the sequence of the three digit multiples of 11. You should find the sequence of three digit multiples of 11 that leave remainder six. You must find, you must take the sequence of all the three digit numbers, which when divided by 11, leave remainder six. Take three digit numbers, divide them by 11. The remainder should be six. Such numbers you must take. So for that, you should add six to this. Add six, add six, add six. Add the remainder, add the remainder. So sequence of three digit multiples of 11. Oh, sorry, three digit. Three digit numbers, sequence of three digit numbers that leave remainder six when divided by eleven. Okay. Sequence of three digit numbers that leave remainder six when divided by eleven. What is the first sequence we have? We have multiples of eleven. That is not the required uh, AP. When you divide the num, when you divide that, you take a three digit number. You should divide that by 11. Remainder should be six. Such numbers you must consider. So what is 88 plus six? Is it a three digit number? Leave it. What is 99 plus six? That's a three digit number. So take that. That's the first number. Now I'll check the conditions. Is 105 a three digit number? Yes. Is it exactly divisible by 11? No. When you divide by 11, does it leave remainder 6? Yes. So it satisfies all the conditions. It is a three digit number. It is not a multiple of 11. When you divide it by 11, you get remainder 6. So 105. And how did you get 105? 99 plus 6. That's why I said to be safe, take a few numbers before the first number. One, one will do, just take one or two. One or two you take. Now, you know, before this is 88, 88 plus 6 is 94. That's a 94 is a two digit number that leaves remainder 6 when divided by 11. 90, 88 plus 6, 94. 88 plus 6, 94 is a two digit number that leaves remainder 6 when divided by 11. No, we don't want that. We want a three digit number that leaves remainder 6 when divided by 11. So that's 99 plus 6, which is 105. That's the first number. Then 116. 116. When you divide 116 by 11, the remainder will be 6. 
120. So this is the sequence of three digit numbers that leave remainder 6, 1 divided by 11. So very simple. What you have to do is first you generate the sequence of multiples of 11. Then you add the remainder. Whatever is the remainder, add the remainder. First you generate the multiples. Take one or two numbers extra before the first one. And whatever is the remainder, add the remainder. That is the that is a required sequence. Now answer the question. Find the sum. You should find the sum, not how many. You should find the sum. The question is not how many numbers are there here. How many numbers are there in the sequence? No, that's not the question. The question is find the sum of all these numbers. So what is 105 plus 116 plus 127 plus till 996? What is the sum is the question. What is the sum is the question. So break down the question and understand the question. That is very important. Now to find the sum, what all, what all do you need? Now you have to find the sum now. Every numbers are king, sum can be pretty good. They tell you, then how can you find the sum? Sum can be pretty good. No, no, we'll tell you. Me first 10 numbers or a sum, and first 20 numbers or a sum, first 30 numbers or a sum. I think sum can be pretty good. Other way, tell you, no, first n can be pretty good. First n can be pretty good. And n can be pretty good. You should take the help of the last number, which is 996. So a n is equal to 996. If the work for Naka, you will get the value of n. You will get the value of n. Do that first. Stop at n and tell me the value of n, then I'll tell you what to do. Ma'am, the value of n is 82, ma'am. Hmm. Ma'am, I've also find, found the final answer, ma'am. What's the answer? Um, 45,141. Oh, very good. You're right. Whenever you know that last term, you can use this formula. Then by two of the first term plus the last term, because we know the last term is 996. Parent, you're done. Okay. 
Let's turn on the first light and then we we'll switch it over. Kid, uh, the switchboard look kid, last bottom roller, both the switches on. That part. None children? Finished? Done online students? Completed now. Okay. Yeah, we'll just do this and wind up the session for today. <laughs> Auto, huh, Krishmi? Oh. Okay. So maybe you can even take down this question and leave if you think he'll be waiting down for you. Okay. Yeah. So A is the first term, right? B is the second term. Second term meaning A plus D, correct? C is the third term, A plus 2D. Now some of us are not still comfortable with the C. A, B, C, D, E. First term, second term, third term, fourth term, fifth term. So this is A. This is A plus N minus 1 into D. So A plus 2 minus 1 into D. So A plus D it is. This is A plus 3 minus 1 into D. So A plus 2D. A3 means A plus 2D. A4 is A plus 3D. A5 is A plus 4D. Correct? Now just substitute. What is, what is cap? A minus 4B plus 6C minus 4D plus C is equal to, what is A? A plus minus 4 into B is A plus D plus 6 into, what is C? A plus 2D, correct? Minus 4 into, what is D? A plus 3D, yes or no children? Plus E, what is E? A plus 4D. Work this and you get something like, you have done it in a different way here. You can do it this way or, or this way, children. Here also you'll get the same result. Maybe here you will get like something like uh, all the D's should get cancelled. All the D's will get, you work it now. Complete this because. Mom, I got the same answer. What do you get? Zero, mom. Yeah, this, which method? Uh, this method, mom. Yeah. 
Uh, so all the these got cancelled, is it? Yes, ma'am. So children, you can do that. Work it. If you want the perfect presentation. Ma'am, I got zero. Ma'am, I got zero as final answer. I got zero as well. Very good. A minus 4 into A plus D plus 6 into A plus 2D minus 4 into A plus 3D plus A plus 4D. So A minus 4A minus 4D plus 6A plus 12D minus 4A minus 12D plus A plus 4D. Minus 4a, minus 4a, and uh, I won't cancel. A minus 4a is minus 3a, uh, 3a, 3a minus 4a is minus a plus a, 0. And then uh, minus 4d, 8d, and 8d, and uh, this minus 4d plus we yeah, are 0. Simplified 0. Because it's given A, B, C, D, form an A, P. So capital letter A is the first term A. Capital letter B is A plus D. Capital letter C is A plus 2D. Capital letter D is A plus 3D. And capital letter E is A plus 4D. And substitute in that expression given. Zero. I can, you can also do it like this. This I'll explain in the next class, okay? Online children now. See, children should be presented like this. I just uh, roughly worked it earlier. I'll share this picture on WhatsApp. All right, uh, children. So that's it for today's session. Online students will leave the call. Thank you. Good night. Thank, Thank you, children. You. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Good night.